this morning? Okay. Well, I guess we're going to have an unusual service today, so let's just stand and go to the Lord. to me, I guess, me um, or Sally and myself, you can help get t-shirt sizes. We're making t-shirts for everybody that says God, my new ribbon. So, praise the Lord. All right. Um, an offering. Toby and Dawn, can you come take an offering this morning, please? Toby, you want to ask him one Lord, we're thankful to be here today in your house, God. We live in glory to you, God. We stand and trust in your word each and every day. Proclaim it, God, as part of our life. Each and every word that is spoken, God, is for us. This now, day, God, not for then, it's for now. Your people, God, declare to this world your truth and your thanks. Now, Lord, we just ask that you be here with the remainder of the service, God. Bless this offering in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, as many of you know, City and I were supposed to be uh, out 
relaxing by a campfire this morning, but I found a car to sit by a campfire when it's 100 degree wind. So they asked me why didn't you go. I said the fire kept going out because of the heat. <laughs> We're going to go out next weekend, but uh, hallelujah. It's time to worship Him. Um, Lord was speaking to my heart. He says, uh, The fire that is within you that needs to be released this morning. Um, and I know many of you have the fire of God within you. There. Many of you don't know that have accepted the Lord that there is a fire in you that needs to be released. Okay? You have Jesus in your heart. You have the kingdom in your heart. Okay? Don't hold back. Um, I've seen as everybody was letting the fire out of their spirits it just plays in this place that could be seen in the spirit realm for miles and miles. Um, <clears throat> Lord wanted me to show that and share that this morning. Um, I'm not here by accident. This he has a purpose and a plan. And uh, I'm just trying to be faithful to this his calling on this. Jesus touched a blind man and made him see. He cast a demon out of the man from Galilee. He cleansed the leper too. He made the blind brand new. He brought no back to a hopeless life. A testify to you, I've been delivered.
deeply. So deeply. That he just wants you to surrender and let go. Let go. Fall into him. Just as surely as the sun rises in the east and sets as the west, I have an everlasting love for you. You can trust me completely. You can trust me completely to let it go and rest in you. been speaking into my heart all morning. If you feel that you're dry, if you feel like you're in a dry place, or if you think that you are full of His presence, of His Spirit, I invite you to stand out in the aisle and Toby and Jody, if you could pray for those in need. Anybody on the platform, anybody in this room that needs a fresh touch, that needs a filling of the Holy Ghost, I invite you to just come out to the aisle. If you've never been filled with the Holy Spirit, it's okay. This is a safe place. Come be filled. If you feel that you've been in a dry place and you've been emptied out and you need a fresh filling, now's the time. Now's the time. Time. Come on, church. Be filled. Suzanne, we're going to pray for the people as they step out. Rob, Brian, step out for people that need a fresh touch.
You see, if we if we really believe that, mm -hmm. I mean, if we really had it in our heart, mm -hmm. how how different would our lives be? Really, I mean, the anxieties, the, the fears, the stresses, the, all the things that we deal with would really be irrelevant. Mm -hmm. if we really understood all that He has done for us, all that yes. we are yes. in Him. There's nothing more for us to do. Right. Just to believe it. Jody was talking about it, entering into his rest. He sang about the songs, we heard testimonies about it. But that, that's the that's the deal. And you know, we say, well, well, you know, we've heard this. But faith in that, it comes by hearing, and by hearing, and by hearing. It's a consistent word that comes from God that settles in us to where we to we experience it. So we're not just having an intellectual assent to it, but we're actually living it out in our own lives. Yes. And that's what God wants for us. That's what He gave us. That's what He paid the price for us to experience. And so, that's what we're after. Amen? Yes. Praise the Lord. So, if uh, Sheila, if you will, let's go to Matthew chapter 23. And I want to read verses 13 through 15. Praise the Lord. Went to a wedding for my for one of our granddaughters yesterday, and that was pretty exciting. I just remember when she was we were talking about her going home about she was about two or three. Mm -hmm. It's weird how fast time goes. Mm -hmm. uh, how life just keeps on keeping on. There's a certain sense of satisfaction in that peace, I guess, that is, there's consistency mm -hmm. in what God does and, and how He wants to do it in all of us. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, it's a good thing. Praise the Lord. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. You neither go in yourselves, and neither suffer you them that are entering to go in. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you devour widows' houses. For a pretense you make long prayer, therefore you shall receive the greater damnation. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you compass sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he's made, you make him a twofold more of the child of hell than yourselves. <coughs> and for a lot of people, that's been their religious experience. They come with a hunger for God and they get a substitute mm -hmm. that never really satisfies them. And then they become frustrated and they go back and sadly not recognizing the grace of God that they have been delivered. They look for their answers and for their peace and their mm -hmm. satisfaction outside of God some other way. And eventually they just get frustrated and walk off completely. Yeah. And we've had, I mentioned Wednesday night, I don't want to redo that message, but um, we've had people come and go, as most of you know, that have been here any length of time. And, I mean, it still bothers me, but not like it once did. It doesn't bother me too much. Amen, I'd be, uh, it would be a continual last night's Hawkeye game for me. Yeah. <laughs> so, I try not to let it. Yeah. But you know, a lot of the a lot of the people that have been dissatisfied uh, have left because they weren't getting enough religion. Mm -hmm. And I can name I literally could name names, and I'm not I'm not going to do that. But I'm just saying they want to point out some religious thing that they have fixed in their head, and then judge everything by that. Right. And then when you won't play their reindeer games, you know, if you won't get in there and, do, and go with them, then they go off and sure. into something else. Sure. Yeah. And I'm telling you, the, the biggest revelation we have is what Don just got through telling us. Yes, yeah, that's exactly right. Mm. Yeah. And sadly, people will give a mental assent to that, but never embrace it, never really begin yes. to live their lives out of that reality. Because it, it's easier to have a rule to keep. Yeah. Sure. It's not necessarily easy to keep it, but it's easier to have rules and have a 
you know, guidelines and so forth so you can just, you, you don't have to listen to the Holy Spirit. You don't have to sure. believe in everything that God has already done. And it's kind of like I, I told Tammy, she stopped by the other day and was out with babysitting grandkids down in Prairie City. So she came by and we were just talking. She brought up something about somebody's uh, kind of self-absorbed, you know, and nobody that's in this room. <laughs> but I, I told her, I said, well, you know, this is the way we think of it, religiously speaking. I didn't say it in that, those terms. I just tell her this little phrase. But it's kind of the way religious people think. I'd like to thank my arms for always being by my side. <laughs> you know, we are, our, we are our own support system, you know. Yeah. And I'd like to thank my legs for supporting me. Yes. And my fingers, because I can always count on them. <laughs> I mean, it's just all about us, right? I mean, me, 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 me here. I'm getting this all together. In fact, Sally was joking last night when, after the Hawkeye game. I was so yeah, freaked out and hyped, and I couldn't go to sleep. So I was, we were up at midnight. I mean, I watched the John Wayne movie. And so I'm going to go old Western just because I couldn't go to sleep. I was just too tensed up after that. I mean, I was. I was yeah. on the edge of my seat. I mean, I'm, it's a wonder I didn't have cramps just watching that. But nevertheless, uh, kind of get, she said, me, 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 me. It's going to be all about me. And then she started listing all the stuff that she has to do over the next three months, you know, with all the family and grandkids. And you, you all that have them, you know what I'm talking about. It's just, man, man, it just never ends, you know. So she said, it's me, 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 me. And I thought she's freaking out or something, you know. No, I got all this stuff. I've got to get focused on what I need to get done there. You know, I can't just keep being scattered. She wasn't being, you know, weird. She was just expressing her emotions at the moment. So I'm just saying, you know, it's actually easier to get people delivered from sin than it is to get them delivered from religion. Yes. Oh. Yes. I mean, we've had people come in here with all kinds of issues, and man, they're just, I'm not saying their life is perfect after that, I'm just saying, but they connected. They made a connection. <laughs> but people that are so steeped in their religion, you can't get that out. It's hard, almost impossible to get it out because they get they have so much pride in it, sure. and so much like I know that must be true because I've been believing it for twenty years. Right. But look, let's look at Romans chapter eight and verse fourteen. Now here are some of these things that I get. A lot of times it's second hand. In fact, one just recently I got back from somebody who had been here and now they're not here and they through another person they were telling me some things. So I just thought at the time, I, I wish more people were at a loss for words. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean sometimes you just yeah. I don't know when to stop, but as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Yeah. So what were we being led by? before we were born again, before we were saved. Mm -hmm. We were still being a rule. We were being led by rules and regulations from the Old Covenant, whether we understood that or not. Right. Amen. That's just, whether you were in a church or not in a church, that's what dominates. That's what was controlling. Proverbs 23, verse 27. For a whore is a deep ditch, and a strange woman is a narrow pit. Now what if that scripture isn't talking about some prostitute on the street corner? I mean, because if you read it in the context of Revelation through the entire Bible, you can see that there's another message being delivered here. But it's a hard religious system. Babylon's what it's called in the New Testament or in the book of Revelation. It's a man-centered religious system. Yes. And people come from all different backgrounds to church to 
different services to different uh, denominations, to different organizations and so forth, but they come because they have, it's in every person to know that there's a God. So they come longing for this intimacy with Jesus and they leave never really having an encounter with Him, only with a religious service, only with a church function. And so they're frustrated and they, they give up. They just say, well, I, you know, I've got this longing for this, I feel this desire to connect, but there's no connection. It's always just kind of out there somewhere. So they come to the church service. They're frustrated. They don't, they don't have their encounter. And it's because they get pointed to religion instead of to a relationship with God. Yeah. They get pointed to the law instead of love. Bye. Now, I, I mean, I know I came from a different plane. You know, I mean, from a different religious way of uh, looking at Scripture through the Pentecostal holiness thing. And and, uh, and so when I talk to people like that, I think, okay, I get it. I mean, I know what why they are, but why wouldn't they want to be set free? Why wouldn't they yeah. want to know the God of whatever that religion is instead of just the religion of, that is around it? Yeah. So they come and they, they, they experience a momentary excitement and that's what happens a lot just like in the service this morning. Now, I'm not saying that's what this is. I'm just saying we can do stuff. There needs to be connected. People need to come with a hungry heart. They need to know that there's a, yes. there is a reality there, right. not just a hype, not just right. something that we're you know, trying to push on to get them to join our club. Right. But this is about them and God. Yes. And so they experience a momentary excitement without real fulfillment. Sure. The real fulfillment that comes from being married yeah. and having a relationship. Yes. Something that's more than just a momentary feel-good experience, but something that will literally change their life. Uh, yes. Matthew chapter 15 again, or excuse me, Matthew 15 and verse 14. Of course, you know, we, the, the age that we live in, <clears throat> I'm not judging, I'm just saying, nobody's been more guilty of these kind of things, but um, people are satisfied with their living together. And I'm not saying that a piece of paper makes it more spiritual than not, but most of the time that is an excuse for not making a commitment. Not all the time, but a lot of times. So here he says in, in Matthew 15, verse 14, Let them alone, they be blind leaders of the blind. And if a blind lead the blind, both of them will fall in the ditch. So they end up in the pit of this, they're talking about this whore. Why? Because religion is trying to provide something that it doesn't have the capacity to provide. They can give you instruction, they can give you... In, in intellect and answers to certain questions, but it can't give you revelation. It can't give you the encounter or the experience that you need to have, that your heart is actually longing for. It's not looking for a religion. It's looking for God. It's looking yes. for a connection, amen, to God. And so what, what's happened is religion has learned to practice safe church. Hmm. Safe church, and the result is they're in a pit. Yeah. Going nowhere. Just right. stop. Revelation 18, verse 7. How much she had glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her, for she saith in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow. 
and shall see no sorrow. I'm a queen. I'm not a widow. This religious system that we're talking about refuses to acknowledge that her first husband, Adam, is dead. I'm not a widow. Praise the Lord. Stay with me now. And it's because she doesn't understand that she, because she doesn't understand what I'm talking about here in terms of her being a widow, to Adam, to the first Adam, the result is a cup full of suffering goes to those that follow her. Praise the Lord. Come on. I mean, Jesus drank the cup of suffering on the cross. Yes. So there isn't any for us. Not for those who are connected to Him. Not for those who are His bride. Those that are married to Him. Amen? He redeemed us from the curse of the law. Yes. Alright, Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 29 through 31. Praise God. Say it again. Jeremiah 31 verses 29 through 31. Gotcha. In those days, they shall say no more, the fathers have eaten sour grape, and the children's teeth are set on edge. But everyone shall die for his own iniquity. Every man that eateth the sour grape, his teeth shall be set on edge. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel yes. and with the house of Judah. Yes. So, the children's teeth are set on edge. Well, we know the scripture that says that uh, for those who... Uh, are not connected to God, the sins of the fathers are passed on from generation to generation up to the seventh generation or something like that. So that's what we're talking about here. The children's teeth are set on edge because they expected the sin of the fathers to be visited on them. So they're tense. Right? Third, up in the scriptures, third and fourth generation. All right, look at back at okay. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. What's the new covenant? The new covenant context is your sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Yes. Okay, so why why say that? Well, because Jesus died for all our iniquities. Yes. On the cross, he cried, I thirst. And what did they give him? They gave him vinegar. Yeah. Sour grapes. Yes. Amen. And so. His teeth were set on edge. He, he, he took the cup. Yes. Praise the Lord. We aren't, see, we're not trying to kill the old man. That's what you get from, they want to beat that person who won't yes. conform to their religious doctrines and, and, and belief systems. They want, they want to beat them up and drive them to the ground and make them feel guilty and ashamed yes. and blah, 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 and all that because they want to, they really, what they want is conformity and they're really not looking for deliverance or salvation. They're looking for somebody to conform to their yeah. way of thinking. Yeah. So we're not trying to kill the old man and we're not trying to improve the behavior of the old man. We are supposed to reckon him dead. Yes. 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 The old covenant was written to the old man. Yes. Yes. The, the man that was without Christ, the man who was still under Adam. Right. Who was still married to Adam. Yes. Amen. But the new covenant is written to the new man. Yes. The man who has recognized that the old husband has died. Yes. And now I'm free to marry another. Yes. Praise the Lord. You can't do that. It's adultery unless the old one's dead. That's the whole point. Ecclesiastes chapter 1. Ecclesiastes 1, 1 through 10. And I'll tell you what happens. When people then want to argue their religious beliefs, it doesn't bother me. It really does. It's like listening to my grandchildren try to explain solar power. <laughs> I, I, seriously. I mean, I, I tried to say, well, my one grandson was like five. And he was asking me, 
we've got this little weird owl thing by the by a bird feeder in the backyard, and it has a little solar panel down here that that gathers yes. energy, obviously, and then translates it back through the battery back to this owl. I wasn't sure it was an owl, but it is. It just looks weird, and it lights up in the night. So you can yeah. See, so he's trying to he wants to know it. So I, you know, being the great intellect that I am, <laughs> I explained it to him as simple as I could for a five-year-old, you know. Yeah. And my God, this kid went on and on and on for, did it, for like hours, trying to rethink this whole thing and how it works and everything else. But see, it's, it's, he, he couldn't quite grasp it. I mean, he knew what I was trying to say, but he was, he's used to just, you know, you flip a light switch and that's how you get light. And anything other than that is just bizarre. So that's kind of what happens with us. So, but I think of it the same way. When, when somebody wants to argue that way, I think this is like my five-year-old. You know what? You can only tell them so much. Yeah. Right. And if if they want to believe it, they'll believe it. If they don't, they won't. And eventually, they'll find out it's true anyway. So sure. you know, I don't have to prove my point. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The words of the preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem. Vanity of vanities, saith the preacher. Vanity of vanities. All is vanity. What profit hath a man of all his labor which he taketh under the sun? One generation passeth away, another generation comes, but the earth abideth forever. The sun also ariseth, and the sun goeth down, and hasteth to his place where he rose. The wind goeth toward the south, turned about unto the north, it whirleth about continually, and the wind returneth again according to its circuit. All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full. Unto the place from whence the rivers come, thither they return again. All things are full of labor, man cannot utter it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be. And that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. Is there anything whereof it may be said, see, this is new. It hath been already of old time which was before us. Uh, verse 15. That which is crooked cannot be made straight, and that which is walking cannot be numbered. That's under the Old Covenant. All of that is under the Old Covenant. Now, in the New Covenant, we aren't living life under the sun, S-U-N. We're living life under the sun, S-O-N. In the sun, S-O-N. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. So under the Old Covenant, the promised land was a piece of real estate. Amen? Under the New Covenant, it is rest in the finished work of Christ. Yes. yes. It's nothing more for us to do except to just rest, as, as Jody was saying, and similarly what that song is saying to us from God. Yes. 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 <laughs> Hebrews chapter 4, uh, verses 1 through 3. The, the, we've read these scriptures all, all over the place, I mean, many, many times. But just think of the context of this, of how these scriptures all connect. Yes, yeah. Old covenant, yes, new yes, covenant. Yes. Let us therefore fear lest the promise being left of us entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Just think about it. That's what religion is. Mm -hmm. it, it makes promises, yeah. amen, that can't be realized through the way they want you, you to experience it. Right. And therefore we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath. If they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. If you think about the typical church, if you live that way, you're, a, you're ostracized. You're an outcast. Because you're living your life openly, in faith, trusting God, while they're doing this thing hidden, secretly. They're doing the same thing you're doing, they're just lying. Sure. They're just saying they're not getting mad, they're not losing their temper, they're not getting frustrated, they're not whatever. Right. And it makes them a twofold child of hell because not only won't they enter into the rest, right. 
They're stopping other people from entering by playing the same stupid game that they're playing. Yeah. Right. Right. Praise the Lord. By faith, we entered into this new life. Yes, Lord. Into a new land. Amen. It's a new land called rest. Yes. Yes. I'm not working to get saved. No. I'm living out my salvation. Yeah. Praise God. I found a heavenly city. I found a residence where there's rest. Yes. Where there's no more labor. It's, it's actually what Hebrews 11 talks about. They looked for a city whose builder and maker was God. A place of rest where they didn't labor to build their houses, where they didn't labor amen, to plant their crops, and where they just entered in and received the fullness of what God had for them, what God had promised them was theirs by inheritance. Praise the Lord. It's a, it's a location of this heavenly land, and it's in Christ. It's the kingdom of God. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3. Some of these things I've talked about before, but it's worth repeating. So, blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. You look that word up, blessing, that word blessing is the Greek word eulogia, which is where we get the English word eulogy. Something you say over a dead body. Are you ready to be blessed? You need to start speaking a eulogy over that old man. Yes. Over that old reality. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Good, but it's dead. Yes. Too bad. It's over. Praise the Lord. You are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. God pronounced you dead in Adam. No. You've been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. Right. Isaiah 62, verse 4. What I don't get, I guess people are afraid that God can't be this good. I mean, I don't, want, I don't have any other explanation other than they have had this put into them subliminally and openly that God is angry. God's going to get you. God's looking at you and he's, he's got a list. He's checking it twice. He's finding out who's not even nice. He's a big stand right now for And he's going to get you. So we live our, our whole lives in fear. Fear of judgment. Thou shalt no more be termed forsaken. Neither shall thy land any more be termed desolate. But thou shalt be called Hephzibah and thy land Beulah. For the Lord delighteth in thee, and thy land shall be married. Well, there's some weird metaphors there talking about an acreage somewhere. <laughs> but the benefits of life in Christ are the benefits of a married life. Yes. That's what he's trying to get across to us. So we don't fall into a pit of a harlot system that's trying to tell us, I sit as a queen and I'm not a widow. Our first husband, Adam, came to an end. Yes. Anybody that wants to resurrect him, that's your business. Yes. But, you know, yes. I'm not into necromancy. I'm not into messing with dead stuff. Right. Amen. So, our first husband is gone. He's dead. He's buried. He's old. He's done. And the new covenant is my marriage contract. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. It's a covenant. And it's what gives us the right to intimacy with Jesus. Yes. Yes. With God. Yes. yes. I'm not going to get married. I'm already married yes, to Him. Lord. The old covenant was a marriage certificate that kept me bound to Adam. Mm -hmm. But I've been 
born again. Praise the Lord. I have a legal right to the name Jesus. Praise the Lord. Romans chapter 7, uh, verses 1 through 4. Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, how that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he lives? For the woman which hath a husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loose from the law of her husband. So that if while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from that law, so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that you should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. Yes. Praise the Lord. We're not practicing safe church with Jesus. Amen. We're in for the whole thing. Yes. Praise the Lord. We want to bring forth fruit. Amen. That, that, that uh, testifies to our relationship yes. with God. Yes. With Jesus. Amen. So the law of the old covenant is what kept us bound and what kept us married to, to the first Adam. Yes. But now that our first husband, Adam, is dead, yes. we're free to be married to another. Yes. yes. To him who was raised from the dead. Yes. Right. Who was alive forevermore. Yes. yes. Last marriage. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's not something that's going to happen in the future. He loved the church and gave himself for her. Now, it's not like a lot of marriages today where you wake up the next morning and go, whoa, what did I get into here? <laughs> or six months or a year or whatever, and you're thinking, oh, Lord, what, what kind of thought was that? This is a marriage with no regrets. Right. He has declared us spotless, perfect, righteous before he marries us. He, he imparts that to us. No iniquities, no uh, no sin. Declared righteous. Deuteronomy 34, verses 5 and 6. See, we're still trying to fix ourselves up, and He's already declared us perfect and beautiful and spotless and holy, and He's married us, and we're still trying to mess around with ourselves. It reminds me old, I don't know, it was Billy Joel, one of these, I can't remember this. The name of the song, I just remember part of it says, Don't go change it. No new fashion for try to please me. Don't change the color of your hair. You're perfect. Here's a here, here's a, in the story in the song, here's a woman who the guy's madly in love with and, since, and thinks she's absolutely a 10, she's perfect, and she's still trying to get a nose job or or you know change the color of her hair or trying different you know styles of clothes to impress him, and he's already. Bought in 100%. Yeah. And that's what we do in the church. Yeah. He's told us how perfect we are, how He loves us, and how good, and all that. And here we are out here running around trying to do all these little things, yes. thinking that we're impressing Him, when all to do is it's detracting from our true identity. Yes. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. And He buried him in the valley in the land of Moab over against Beth Peor, but no man knows of his sepulcher unto this day. <laughs> Nobody knows where he's buried. Jude chapter 9, or excuse me, Jude 9, since there's only one chapter. Yet Michael, the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses. Yeah. Where's it buried? Durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, the Lord rebuked him. Now, this is, a, this is a metaphor or a type of all the body of the law. Moses represents the Mosaic yes. law. Yes. He's buried and nobody yes. can find it. It's gone. It's yes. not to be resurrected. If God wanted you yes. to know, amen, what, what the law was all about, He'd tell you. Yes. If He wanted us to know, He'd say, 
Moses is buried over here under this rock next to this tree. But he said, no, he's buried. He's gone, and I don't want him dug up. I don't want anybody going back to that. I've got a new covenant for you, a new, new reality. Praise the Lord. Colossians chapter 2, verse 13 and 14. And see why? Because we mix these things all the time, all it does is confuse us. Yes. Because I'm not saying it's not noble or, or, or good to want to be a good person and to want to do good things. We should. Yes. But that's not, that is not the criteria for us being in intimacy with God. Right. It's our accepting and acknowledging the love and the forgiveness and the grace and the mercy that He's already provided to us. Yes. Yes. And He said, you're beautiful. Yes. I can't live without you. Uh, yes. I got to marry you. Yes. I'm gonna have your baby. Praise the Lord. You know what I'm saying? That's 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 what he's telling us. I I want us to have fruit. Yes. yes. So you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, have he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. All trespasses. Yes. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. Which is the law, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Yeah. Now, no weapon formed against you can prosper. Yes, right. Why? Because he took the weapons away yes. that were used against us, which was the law. Yes. So now there is no weapon formed against you that can prosper. Right. And every tongue, religious, Yep. Demonic, yep. well-meaning, that tries to condemn is condemned because of our righteousness, which is from God. Yes. So I don't have to. I don't have to defend myself. No. I don't have time, really, for one thing, for all the things that need defense. But I don't have to because I've already been declared innocent. Yes. Yes. Not that I'm guilty. Not not a legal loophole. Innocent. Yes. It never happened, whatever you're thinking. Mm. As yes. far as the judge is concerned, it never happened. Jesus. Praise the Lord. Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 49. We, I, I said many times, but we ought to be the happiest people, no. the most uh, no. at peace the, the most uh, balanced. Yes. What do we, how, why should we be neurotic? Why should we be yeah. uh, psychotic and, and you know neurotic and, and and schizophrenic and all all the all the emotional crap that comes with living in a world that is so dysfunctional that you have to be almost nuts to fit in in, in a lot of places. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or at least you've got to be able to act like you are True. while you're with them. Praise the Lord. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Yeah. Now we all know what we were sure. before we were born again. We were earth beings. We were just earthy people. Yes. And we bore the image of that earthly reality. Sure. We see it every day. Sometimes it bothers us because it reminds us. <clears throat> yeah. yes. See it in your kids. Sometimes acting up, acting a little crazy, going, you know, doing some stuff. And why does it bother? Because it, it, it looks a lot like that image uh -huh. that I remember 35, 40 years ago. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm. Praise the Lord. So, if you believe who you are in Adam, you're going to bear that image. Yeah. If you believe in the earthly image yeah. as your parent, that's the image you're going to live out. Yeah. You're going to be bound yeah. to a dead man. Uh -huh. yes. You're going to be stuck with the consequences of that life. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 14 through 18. You're going to bear the image of the earthy. See, that's why I say, you, you see somebody who is unsaved, acting a fool, and then people act shocked by it. Why? That's their image. 
They had an earthy image, and that's what's being reflected. Why should it shock us that sinners sin? Amen. Their minds were blinded, for until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. But even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Mm -hmm. Now the Lord is that spirit where the spirit of the Lord is. There's liberty. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. So, we, we have to recognize yes. that when we're, we're looking at this image, are we, are we looking at the earthly image? Or are we looking at our heavenly image? The reality of who we are now. Yeah. We look in the mirror, we see an earthly image, we go, oh, that's, that's me again. No! You, you have... You have died. Yes. And now you are a new creature in Christ. If But we all, with open face, beholding as in the glass, the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Now, let's leave that there for a second. That's what he's talking about when he says the earth, those that are born of the earth, have an earthly image. You've been born again. You've been born from above. You need to acknowledge that image because that's who you really are. Yes. That's your identity. If you go looking in the mirror and seeing something else, you better have a mental adjustment to that or you're going to be living out a false identity. You're going to be living out an alias. Yeah. Praise the Lord. So, Jude chapter 9. No, excuse me again. Yeah. Only one chapter. Jude 9. Yet Michael the archangel when contending with the devil he disputed about the body of Moses so those not bring against him a real accusation. Jude 9. That is. I know. I know. That's why I said Jude 9. <laughs> but look at this. Let me, let me show this. Likewise, this is verse just before. Likewise, also, these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignitaries. Yet Michael, the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses. But he didn't bring accusation, a railing accusation against him, but said, The Lord rebuke you. So the devil is always trying to get you into a debate about your identity. Whether you're dead in Christ, amen, and alive in Christ, died with Christ, raised together with Him in heavenly places, or you're under this mosaic law, this covenant, this old covenant of law, amen, that's the, that's the debate. Yes. And you know yourself. You say, well, I, I've never had an attack with the devil. He, he messes with your head. He, he sows thoughts that make you think, well, yeah. maybe I'm not safe. Maybe this is, maybe that, you know, maybe I need to do that. If I could just get this thing and I would fix yeah. this, then I'd be, everything would be cool. No. You're, you're having a debate about a dead body. Yeah. Yeah. You're having an accusation that's coming against you yeah. about whether or not you are a new creature in Christ. Mm -hmm. Whether you're still bound to that old law, amen, to, de to define your identity. Right. Yes. Praise the Lord. So, Likewise, all these filthy dreamers, defile the flesh, despise the many, speak evil of dignitaries. Now, what happens when a uh, or oh, uh, uh, another person, a religious person, <coughs> sees you and you're out at the park or you're at the lake or you're somewhere and you got a, a beer? <laughs> Or you have a glass of wine or something. I'm not, I'm not endorsing alcohol. I'm just saying. I'm just using this as a as a title. What what happens? They speak evil. You're the dignity. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. You are the dignitary. Amen. We saw the song that we were just talking about that Don pointed out. That's what is that saying about? It's saying, hey, we're something special. Yes. And the enemy is constantly... Yes. See, here's the deal. The devil 
wanted to be like God. So what did he do to be like God? He said stuff. Because yeah. he knows how that, that's how God works, right? Yeah. So he said, I will ascend. I will be like the Most High. What? Why does he hate us so much? Because we have a legal right to do this, yes. and he doesn't. He was trying to usurp God, God's authority and God's power that he didn't have. It wasn't his to begin with. It was only man's. So when we declare our righteousness in God, who we are in Christ, we're having a, we're having a little bit of a debate here with a lying devil who can never experience the authority and the power that we have by being born again. Yes, that's right. And every time we get into these squirrely debates about religion, we diminish ourselves. We lessen our, our dignity of who we are in Christ. And therefore, by doing that, we, we diminish God. Praise the Lord. So this is a metaphor or a type for all the body of Christ. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. All right. We were reading there. He says, well, let me, let me back up here. He says, don't put a veil, right? Every time the law is read, there's a veil over their face. So they can't see like they ought to see. Right. Yeah. Everything's distorted. Right. So don't put a veil over your face so that you can't see who you are in Christ. That's what he's telling us. Right. Don't let religion veil your identity with a bunch of stuff that has nothing to do with who you are now because that's how you dead. As far as you're concerned, it's dead. Yes, there are some people that are still married to that dead man. But it isn't us. Praise the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 12. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. Yes. We're known as the righteousness of God. Right? Everything in heaven, including, yes. including fallen angels that are in the heavens between here yes. and the heaven, they know who we are. Yes. It's just a question of whether they can rob us of our identity. That's right. If they can That's deceive right. us into believing that we're not that, then they have authority, then they have a way of manipulating right. us right. to use our authority against ourselves. Yes. Why? Because we start saying stuff like, oh, I'll never get this figured out. I'll never be able to be a good guy. I'll never be able to live for God. I'll, God will never bless me. God will never give me that breakthrough. I'll never get healed because I'm too screwed up. See what I'm saying? Yeah. That's the whole fight. That's the battle. That's the argument that goes on continuously. Yes. 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 Praise the Lord. So, James chapter 1, verse 21 through 25. James 1, 21 through 25. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any man be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like a man beholding his natural face in the glass. For he beholds himself, and goes away, and straightway forgets what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty yes. and continueth therein, yes. he being not a forgetful yes. here, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Yes. Now this, this, we've read this for years as a scripture that puts pressure on us to perform. Yeah. That's not what it is. It's, the word of God is a mirror. Now, we already have been identified as being without spot, without wrinkle. Am I right? Yes. Yep. We are the bride of Christ. Yep. We are new creatures. Yes. We are alive in God. Amen? Yes. But we look at the mirror of God, and because of religion, what we end up doing is we look to see what's wrong with us. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I did that. Yeah. I thought that. I said that. So... We see how ugly we are. Because uh -huh. we're looking darkly. We're not beholding who we really are. And we end up with mistaken identity. Yeah. We end up with a false reality in terms of who and what we are. 
This guy was beholding his natural face. Just so look at the perfect law of liberty and continue there and being not a forgetful here, but a doer of the work this man shall be blessed in his deeds. So just before that, beholding his natural face in a glass, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Strong's Concordance translates that word natural from a Greek word genesis or the Greek word for genesis literally meaning the face of his birth genesis meaning beginning yeah. so he looks at his natural face his genesis face or his his uh, birth face mm -hmm. in a glass now here's what's interesting is it specifically means the face of his new birth <coughs> Beholding his new birth face in a glass, he goes away and forgets what manner of man he is. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yeah. All right. Does that help anybody? Praise the yes. Lord. Amen. One more scripture real quick. James 1, verse 25. Whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful here, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed. Look in the perfect law of liberty. He's not to behold who he is in Adam, but behold who he is in Christ. Yes. Yes. Not to look at the law of Moses, Jesus. but it's into the perfect law of liberty. Yes. And continue therein. Yes. You don't just glance at it when you pray the prayer. Amen. Or get baptized or speak in tongues and then go right back out and wrestle with yourself for the rest of your life over who and what you are. Right. You continue to look into the perfect law of liberty. Not back to the Mosaic law, but to the perfect law of liberty which has, we have received through Jesus Christ. Yes. By grace are you saved. Oh. Not by works, lest any man should boast. It yes. is a gift from God. Yes. Yes. Alright. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'll quit with this. Philemon 6. Philemon 6. This ought to be a scripture you write down and put it on your forehead, on your mirror, somewhere, and just see it over and over. That the communication of your faith may become effectual by the acknowledged. How do I share my faith? How do I show that I'm a person of faith? The only way I can do it effectively or effectually is by the acknowledging of every good thing that is in me in Christ Jesus. Not what I'm trying to be, but what I already am. By acknowledging that true identity of who I am in Christ is how I best effectively share my faith in God. That's how we do it. Amen. Amen. Not looking at all, oh, poor me, I'm just a wretched old poor sinner saved by No! He said the way we are effective in sharing this truth is by acknowledging Every good, perfect thing that's in me. Yes. Mm. Not what I'm working or striving to be, but what I already am in Christ. Think about it. Had I known this, if I had been able to, and I don't know that I could have, but if I had been able to receive this 35, 40 years ago, who only God knows where I might be, what I might be doing. I, I never know. Right. But you see what I'm saying? We've spent years and years. First of all, we spent years being indoctrinated into something. Yeah. Then we spent years trying to get out of it. Yeah. Then we come to this other real and now there's this battle all the time between, yeah. oh man, I'm a little concerned and I'm a little nervous because, you know, if I act this or act. Listen, I don't know. All I know is, it, yes, it's scary when I say to the grandkids, it's okay, whatever you want to do, I'm good with it. Because yeah. they're kids. Yeah. You know? But if I'm not honest with them that way, then i got to upset the apple cart somewhere 10, 12, 14 years down the road. I'm going to have to change my whole way of relating to them. Yeah. See, love, grace has got yes. to be the dominant force. Yes. Because without that, I really don't, I really don't have, uh, what's the word? I, I really don't have leverage. If I'm just mad and you yeah. know judgmental and critical, then after a little while, I don't know if you've ever known anybody like that, but after a little while, you quit listening. Yeah. yeah. Right. 
You can just turn it off. But if someone can come to you in love and say, okay, you know, we've got to be careful about some of this stuff because this is a crazy world we live in. Yeah. We're in it. We're not of it, but we're still affected by it. Unless we can keep our focus on who we are in Christ. How much God loves us. How much God wants to forgive you. How much God wants you to enjoy life. Experience all the good things in life. All of a sudden now God is something to be uh, attracted to. Rather than hiding from. I don't have to be afraid. Because when I screw up, I can go to God. When I make the mistake, when I make a choice that I know is a bad choice, but I make it anyway because I want to just do it. I still have acceptance with God. I can still get my life back on track by turning back to God and saying how much He loves me. He hasn't judged me. He hasn't cast me off. He said, that's hurtful for you. But I still love you. And I want to help you get past it. That's the God we serve. That's the, that's the God that the world is looking for. That's the God that everybody longs for. That's the God who's in their heart that says, Abba, Father, the Spirit of Christ crying out from us saying, Daddy, yes. whoa, I need you. I need some help. Yes. Amen. And I don't have to fear that I'll get the cold shoulder right. or the turned up nose or the, you know, you, you, you're just a mess. I don't want to fool you. Just think about God, a Father, who will never, ever turn his back on you. Right. Never. Right. He gave himself for you. Yes, right. yes. So that you can experience the very best of His life yes. in us, in this world. Yes. That's heaven on earth, mm -hmm. if you want to know the truth. Yes. Yes. And it's what we'll experience throughout eternity. No stress. No fear. No anxiety. Why do people get high? To escape? Yeah. Yeah. He is the ultimate escape. Yes, he is. And it's a reality. It's not a false escape. It's not an escape to some alternative universe. It's an escape into reality. Yes. The reality. The only real reality. Yes. Praise the Lord. We need it. The world needs it, or he wouldn't have died to give it to us. That's the life that Adam had in the garden with God. Freedom. Yes. Yes. No stress, no anxiety, right. no fears. Right. Don't have to worry. The kid's going to get in trouble. No, I'm going to get a disease. Won't live long enough to take care of everybody or do what I'm supposed to. You know what I'm saying? Right. None of that existed. Right. None of it. Right. And that's what God's trying to get us back to. Yes. To live with that kind of yes. attitude about yes. God. There's negative stuff comes into my life. It's coming from somewhere besides God. It's not coming from God. Right, right. It's either my foolishness or it's an attack from the enemy. Right. And sometimes we choose up sides, and I'm gonna find myself on his side. You know, I'm just I'm doing the wrong thing, and I'm playing right into his hands. Why? Because I I'm I'm listening to this definition of me that's not coming from God. Right. That is right. Praise the Lord. You talk, you know, uh, people say, well, you know, when you listen to Jesus and it sounds arrogant. No, this was just a guy who knew who he was. Yes. He was not affected by people's opinion of him right. or what they thought of him. He just thought, hey, sorry, you don't get it, but, you know, yeah. this, is, this is the reality here. I don't have to stress out and worry about it all night. I'm not going to be laying awake worrying, do they like me? <laughs> yeah. You know, will they like me or won't they like me? <laughs> the only one that matters yeah. loves me. Yes. Now, you can get on board or sure. bail out. You know, it sure. doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Of course we want friends. We want people. We want to be able to have, But without me knowing who I am, I'm, I'm a jerk. Because mm -hmm. I'm always trying to be something that I'm not. And it's not real. Right. And then it's like watching some TV shows. You know, God, that acting is horrible. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, you just, you know they're acting. Yeah. So there's no... Nothing in the film. A lot of our lives are that way, sure religiously speaking. Sure Not that because we want to be duplicitous or, 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 you know, manipulate, but because we want to be what we think we're supposed to be, and because the church or the religious world tells us we're not, then we pretend that we are that. Right. Um, right. And not only are we miserable, but it makes everybody else miserable. Yeah. Because I always have a higher standard for Sally than I have for myself. 
I'm trying to help her. I want her to grow. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's, that's the way the church kind of operates. Yes. Praise the Lord. God is good. Yes. And He has declared us good. And that's all that matters. We go around shopping. People have got to be a little bit. And they just go shopping for a church. Not, not shopping for God, right. but shopping for a church that will fit their, right. their theology. Right. Right. You know, Sally likes garage sales. Well, I don't know if she likes it, but she goes to them. Just for the chaos, I suppose. But for whatever reason, she likes garage sales. Now, on the other hand, I was hooked on auctions after only going once, going twice. <laughs> We've been purchased. Going, going, gone. We are out of here. We are no longer bound by the rules and the regulations and the laws of the Mosaic Law. We have been set free. We are in a kingdom. Yes. Amen. Yes. That God rules and reigns in. Yes. Where our authority is just like the king's. Yes. Amen. We yes. have been given the authority of God in this yes. Yes. The only way that will function is if we know who we are. If our identity is intact. Yes. And we operate from that. And when the devil comes with the, with the accusation, yes. shut the hell up. Yes. That's right. If it's coming out of your mouth, it's a lie. I mean, if you're saying it, it's a lie because he's the father of liars. So the moment he starts talking to you, you just go, whoa, yep. I'm out of here. Uh, yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. It's like that commercial that you've seen 50,000 times when it comes on and you go, oh, no, I'm not listening to that again. It's making me crazy. Yeah. I'm not buying that stuff. In fact, I'll, I'll never buy it now because I'm so sick of you trying to sell it to me. Yeah. And that's the way we need to get with the devil. Yeah. All right. Amen. 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 Give the Lord a hand. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 God bless all of you. Hey, go in your true identity and the power of His might. Amen. Amen. And live this life to the fullest. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You're dismissed. Amen. 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 Amen.